I came here to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. I didn't have another intro for this movie. It's a fucking awesome movie. Welcome back to my channel. It's Tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss the sound of metal. Now this movie is available on Amazon Prime. It stars Raz Hamid and Olivia Cook. Before I get into exactly why I feel like this film is so amazing, why it's, you know, really fresh in comparison to some of the things that we're seeing today, and why this movie gave me such a fresh appreciation for sound and hearing. Before I get into that, I need you guys to drop down and subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'm going to give you guys a moment to do that and then we're going to come back and discuss all things. See what I'm saying? You Don't you wish you knew what I said? Like, we need to appreciate everything we hear all the time because oh my goodness. to see more of me let's get into this movie now immediately as soon as this movie starts we are introduced into our main character Ruben and his girlfriend and their band and I love them opening the scene this way this whole film was just brilliantly shot and sound all the tech awesome but we uh, we open with them playing like their whole dynamic with the drummer and the guitar and it was like giving me reverse white stripes you know, hey, hey, don't get it twisted. Like, I am a fan of the rock. If you could catch me, 90s rock. I don't listen too much now, but hey, Nine Inch Nails, Slipknot, Corn, Soundgarden, Nirvana, all them good things. I'm always there, still there. But the band was going, and with them opening with, like, so much noise, like, it's so loud. I really wish that I could have experienced this in the theater. It was so loud and so intense, and... I just didn't understand right away. Like, why are they opening with such a long, extensive shot of the band performing and so much noise? But it didn't take me long to figure out why. Now, it's at this point that, you know, we get into them as a couple when we realize they're a couple and they're not just bandmates. And they, you know, live, eat, sleep, and breathe out of their trailer. They travel, you know, on the road and touring, everything. Their whole life is in this trailer. And you see that they record there, they sleep there, they eat and breathe there, consumed with each other. And it's at this point that we really, really get into the sound of the film. And we get into things being really, you know, not, not just that. We get into his morning routine, first of all, and him being, you know, waking up with the morning exercise, with the morning yoga, the healthy eating. You know, it seems like he's really trying to take care of himself. And then we get into, you know, that coffee pot dripping and him, you know, making his morning smoothie and that bullet, like those sounds, like the sound like really, really helped and pushed this film for me because we could have gotten this same film, but if there was not as much emphasis placed on sound, when he actually gets up to the point of him losing his hearing, I don't think it would have hit as hard with us transitioning through the sound with him, you know, them opening with the loud, you know, drums and the guitar and the loud dripping of the coffee pot, the loud sounds of the shower, that loud, you know, bullet, when it starts to fade, it, oh my God, like, I, it's hard to explain, but it's, it's like you were losing, you could hear, but it's like you were losing your hearing with him. And it was so nice to have that kind of experience through a film because I had never had that before. But we get slowly into him, you know, you know, they're touring, they're traveling, and it slowly gets to the point that he just cannot hear. And it it, it, it drifts like so well with like, whoever was, you know, the sound technician or whatever for this film, like, oh my goodness. 
it was it was so perfect so that when he lost it it was like we could hear but we lost it with him and it was it was just so important for us to see how quickly something like that can happen because this is not something that he was born with he just you know happens to lose his hearing and it, it fades away slowly until he just can't hear anything and then we get into him you know going because you know hey we're we're in a rock band I'm with my girlfriend you know I'm living my best life all he can focus on is I need to fix this I need to fix me what do I need to take to get it back and we get you know we get that test remember that test you used to get in elementary school and you just saw what I was like oh it's the moment we get to get out of class and we get that that, that hearing test you know you listen for those clicks we get into that and him not being able to comprehend anything and it's just like wow we were just here with him living thriving hearing and then it was just gone so after the doctor informs him that you know your hearing is slowly fading away and you need to preserve what you have high key stop beating on them damn drums like you have to let go of all of that and just preserve it because once it's gone it's gone and he's you know he's not hearing it all he's hearing is okay what can I do to fix it he bypassed everything that he could do to preserve a little bit of his hearing because he heard of you know a procedure that can you know give you your hearing back but you see you know already that he didn't you know really investigate that situation like he should have because I'm sure because as well as me I'm with him you know if you hear something about you getting your hearing back you're thinking, you know, if I get this procedure and I pay this $40,000 that I don't have, when I do get my hearing back, it's going to, you know, be what I had before. But they don't really just, dis, you know, disclose that. And he doesn't really ask. He just hears, you know, procedure, let me fix it, which, you know, prompts him to still, you know, maintain in the band, still be on those drums, not trying to preserve anything and still hasn't told Lou what's going on with him until, you know, he's mid symbols <laughs> and it just goes and he's you know trying his best and it's so intense oh, so intense y'all and he's you know trying to look at her words and look at her body movement and it's just not working and she's looking like something is changing something is wrong with you and then that's when he you know finally breaks down and tells her you know I can't hear you I can't hear anything and he's smoking that cigarette and I'm like why is she so you know intensified because he's smoking a cigarette and then this one you know later we realize that he's a former addict and you know a cigarette can be a form of a trigger so they just rather you stay completely sober but you see that Lou is just so so worried about him and I know that she was worried about, you know, not only his hearing, but, you know, don't let this situation be your fallback into being an addict again. I just want to make sure he's OK. And they call the manager who gets them in contact with a group that's able to help him. After much pushback from Ruben, they finally go to this deaf slash um, addicts community because, you know, with the manager and Lou, they're worried about don't let this be the reason that you, you know, you relapse. And once we get there and we are introduced to Joe, Mr. Goddamn Joe, played by Paul Racy. Joe was so great here. Everybody here, once they got to the actual community, I was so glad that it wasn't, you know, actors pretending to be deaf. I'm glad we're getting more into the realm of, you know, hiring the right people for the right roles. And it's not, you know, someone pretending to be in a wheelchair, someone pretending to be deaf, someone pretending, you know, to be blind. We're actually hiring people. There are, you know, actual actors and actresses who, you know, have these imperatives. You, you can hire these people. Everyone in this community is dealing with this situation and it is so great. And you see, as soon as um Ruben gets there you know he's insisting you know Lou are you coming and he's like no you have to you know you have to come by yourself it's best that I communicate with you alone Joe you know runs this community not only you know you you even see you know from their initial uh, meeting and he's you know signing and he's like uh Ruben's like no I don't, I don't do that I don't do that he's he's so much in the mind frame of not being acceptance of him losing his hearing and him being deaf because it's you know he's seen it as a handicap he needs to fix he can't really engross him thing in anything else he's like no i'll shake your hand i don't know what any of this means but <laughs> joe informs him that you know uh lou can't be with you they treat this organization as if you know it is a place you know for addicts so to make progress and you know 
really get into you losing your hearing and dealing with it, we need to turn certain things away. And we hear what he's saying. And once Joe, you know, lets us know that not only is he an addict, but he's been, you know, uh, sober for four years and he's been with Lou for four years. So you already see that that she has been his support system there and she has helped him with his sobriety. So he associates everything that he's achieved up until that point with the band and with her. So to take her away and take the, you know, the touring away, the, uh, the you know, the tour bus, away, all of those things away, it's just like all he's, all Ruben is hearing is, you know, red flags of reasons why he shouldn't be here. And he doesn't, you know, take real interest in trying to really hear Joe out at this point. He's just focused on what you're, what you're trying to take away from me. Like, what am I gaining? What, what, what's gonna, you know, help me here? I don't really need to be here. You know what? I'm just gonna leave. So once Ruben actually, you know, denies the group and says, you know, I don't need to be here because Joe makes it very clear here. We don't treat being deaf as something that, you know, we need to fix. We don't do that here. You know, we're willing to teach and help. Ruben ain't trying to hear that. So he tries, you know, to go back on the road and, you know, do things as usual. Like, hey, we, we got this tour. Hey, we got this. Hey, we need to record. But it's totally not the same because he can't hear. And this intensifies his relationship with Lou and worries her so much. And you see that Ruben brain is going straight to, you know, what we always think with our relationships is, you know, when things change, you know, severe changes like me becoming deaf, are you still going to be here? Are you looking for a way out? Are you going to leave me? And it's really killing her. So, you know, she persuades him, you know, I need you to go back. Because if you go down, then I'm going down too. I need you to really go back and try with this deaf slash addict community and get some help. Because I can't help you like this. So he once he goes back and we really get into, like, this is where the movie got, like, really good for me. And it's so interesting because this is where the movie has the least sound. <laughs> It almost gave me like, you know, like those silent films, like a Charlie Chaplin type thing. It was giving me that, like they were acting through, you know, um, through, you know, signing and mouthing and you really don't really hear much. You know, we just get just simple introductions as to, um, you know, what their addiction is and how long they've been there and, you know, them signing or that really, really great scene of them, you know, just at the dinner table, table having dinner. And, you know, there's so much communication amongst them and so much signing and it's silent. All you hear is, you know, sips of juice and uh, forks hitting plates. And it's so great. I loved it. But when we get to Ruben's part, you just see Ruben feeling like an outsider. Like not only do I feel like an outsider because I can't hear, you know, amongst, you know, regular normal hearing people, but I get here in this community. I don't know how to sign. I don't know how to, you know, read lips. He still feels like he's on the outside looking into something. So you see them all engrossed in each other and on it. And Ruben's just like, <sighs> yeah. Now Ruben is placed, you know, in a class with a younger group of kids so he can learn to sign once we get into Ruben trying to learn to sign and also you know be in his group you know with the supporting with the addicts you still see Ruben not able to just be so far that um Ruben is you know making sure he takes time to even sneak because they, they're not supposed to have any outside communications you know he has no phone he has no access to the internet he has no access to his uh his uh trailer but he is just so focused on, I wonder what Lou is doing. I wonder how she's doing. What is she doing without me? Is she moving on? How's the band? How are things that he cannot just sit as Joe said? I love that scene when he takes him and he's um, he's fixing the roof. And he's like, you know, why are you doing that? It's like, you know, I've just like, no, I don't need you to try to preoccupy your time trying to fix anything around here. I don't need you to fix anything. Like, I don't need you to try to fix us or fix yourself. I need you to get to the moment where you can just sit. And he tells him, you know, we're going to have you, um, I'm going to have you just be in a room alone and just write. And he was saying that to him to say, I want you to get everything that you need, everything that you have bottled up, everything that's in here on you, that's just keeping you from sitting and just being accepting of being just deaf. I want you to write. And when you get to the point where you don't have to fix anything, you don't have to look for anything, you don't have to look up anything, you don't have to be concerned about what she's doing, you can be concerned about what you're doing and what you can do now moving forward in your life and just 
sit. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right sign, sit. <laughs> and you see that right away. Ruben just doesn't understand, you know, where he's coming from. And he sees it, you know, kind of, you know, as a punishment. Like, really? You want me to get up at what time in the morning to a donut and coffee? You want me to sit alone in the room and write? What do you mean you want me to sit? I just tried to fix your roof. Like, what the fuck? But you see what um, Joe is trying to do. And it was a really, a really great scene. Now, even though Ruben is, you know, really frustrated with this whole sit mentality, you really see him start to find his footing, you know, with the group and with, you know, the teacher and the children learning to sign and really start to kind of enjoy himself there because, you know, he kind of sees, you know, something in uh, a young man who's there, you know, a small boy, and he tries, you know, to communicate with him. And you see him kind of use his passion, you know, for the drums and things like that. Even with those scenes, you see um, how much pride that the hearing impaired take in little things. And, you know, how they use, you know, things like sensory and um, different objects to feel. Like if I can feel the rhythm, you know, of this drum, you know, through this bucket or if I can, you know, feel this, it's, you know, it's... Oh man, there's such a, um, you see that, um, in the group and in the community, there's such an appreciation for the other senses because they don't have one. So just, you know, things like, you know, touch and, um, things that you can see, there's just so much, you know, it's so heightened here. And it was, it was such, you know, a, a great time just to see him grow. But we do still see that even though he's growing and, you know, he's signing so much that is, you know, competitive. He's, you know, one of the, the best signers there. And the community, they love him there. The kids love him. The other people who, you know, work, they, they really enjoy his presence there. And it's almost, you know, like a sense of family. But even though he's engrossed in that, you still see that he is just like, hmm, I wonder what Louis is doing. I wonder, I mean, what Louis, I wonder what Louis is doing. I wonder what's going on with that. I wonder how long I'm going to have to be here before I get back to my normal life. Because this ain't it. So when you see Joe offer him, you know, kind of a permanent position to be here and, you know, welcome him, in, welcome him into the community. And you know that Joe must really think of a lot of him to do that because Joe is a really intense man and he's really grounded in his rules and the way things operate there. And when he offered him that, and we went from, you know, that beginning scene of him saying, you know, I'm trying, you know, to get the surgery so I can get my hearing back. And Joe says, you know, it costs a lot of money and those things. And I was just sitting there thinking, like, do you not think that the people in this community have, um, you know, thought of those things or, you know, thought about procedures to get their hearing back? And I just felt like deep down, Joe knew that that procedure wasn't quite going to be what Ruben thought it was. And he just didn't say that. Like, I just felt like he knew, like, you knew that procedure wasn't going to be about nothing. But <laughs> we're going to get to that in a minute. Now, since Ruben has, you know, had zero communication with Lou, and even though he's, you know, made friends and kind of engrossed himself in this community and he's learned to sign and he seems to have made so much progress, he just can't stop thinking about what he used to be what used to happen in his life and trying to get back there so much so that you know he's been checking on you know their fan base and their site and he sees you know that the group has kind of gone wayward and you know she's you know things are changing without him so it intensifies like I can't wait you know for something miraculous to happen or for some money to be raised or for any touring I'm going to get this procedure done myself because I need to get back to who I am this is not who I am I'm not going to be a deaf person and we see him, you know, go and sell everything in his van. All the equipment, all of his instruments, all of his recording equipment. Even down to the point that he actually sells the trailer itself. And it is just like, oh. it's just like, whoa, not only are we going against, you know, everything that this community stands for. And we're not following the rules that Joe thoroughly set. But we're going about it kind of in a malicious way. Like you're lying to these people who have, you know, met you with open arms and who have been nothing but, you know, even, you know, an organization, you know, that Joe knows paid for you to be here. These people have been very, you know, opening to you. So if you were going to go this route, you know, why lie about it? You see him, you know, tell one of his uh, friends in the community, you know, I need, you know, to sell this equipment because, you know, I want to send it, you know, to my girl. This is, you know, this is for her. 
and he does all of this up until the point that you know he gets the money for this surgery and goes and has it in secret and doesn't tell anybody about it just after joe offered him you know a chance to stay and just be there with him and really you know betrayed his trust but he goes you don't see him try to speak to anybody about you know if anything that whole uh him going to get that surgery so quickly and um so secretively and not really really reading up and if i'm like you looking up to see what louis is doing child you should have been looking up to see the effects of this procedure <laughs> but it really gave me a lesson in you know when you go to have any kind of you know procedure uh that serious you really need to do your homework on those things but you know he goes back to the community after the uh the doctor informs him you know it's done everything's you know being you know connected you're hearing she come back soon but until then there's a, he a healing process you know of some weeks and then you come back and we'll you know do the test and do the run through and now it's up to him to go back and tell joe you know not only did I not listen to you, but I've been, you know, communicating, looking at Lou. I've been in my trailer. I've sold my trailer. I've got the procedure in secret. And I need some money, you know, to make my way to where she lives across the water. What? I was so glad that at that moment when he came and he was, you know, just so pitiful. And this is, and Joe told him, you know, you, you sound like an addict. And that's when we realized, you know, as an audience that he replaced one drug for another one. This um, music and most of all, Lou has replaced his addiction. So his whole, you know, sobriety here, though it is, you know, very great because, hey, you replaced it with this woman and you're trying so hard to get back to her that you can't even sit. And be grateful for you know what we have to offer you here and i'm not saying that he should have just you know just all oh, just threw away everything he ever knew but just the way he went about it i was so glad that joe said um no not only am i not giving you any money but i'm not letting you stay here either you you know you disobeyed the rules and so many people here who would love you know to have this you know this opportunity in this spot and if you weren't gonna you know give it your all and try hey I can't control what you go and do, you know, with your body and your procedure. But what you're not going to do is roll up in here and lie <laughs> and not follow the rules and think you're going to be here to heal and then go on your merry way with my money. <laughs> and then it's like you just really didn't even think these things through. Like even if um you were, you know, to find Lou and you were supposed to, you know, pick up and go back and do what you needed to do. Your means to do those things are over. The equipment is gone. The instruments are gone. And you don't even know where Lou mentally is at this place. Like, you you haven't even spoken to her. You, The only communication you've had with her is what you've seen online. <sighs> Can't sit here. I don't mean to do my, my forest gun voice. Can't sit here. You can sit here if you want. No, Joe said you gotta get your ass out. You ain't staying here following my road of course the ending of the film mind you this film is like an hour and 20 minutes i'm like whoo a good movie under two hours not today say it ain't so <laughs> but we get into you know him healing and being alone and you know not having anyone there to support him and we get into him going back you know after those weeks pass and he's been in that hotel and he goes back to you know finally like here again he's healed completely and the nurse, you know, turns on that sound and it's just like, whoa, like, what is this? And you were right there with him to go, this is not what I thought it was going to be. And it's like, no, this is, you know, an interpretation of sound. It's not going to sound like what you had before. It's going to, you know, it's going to take some time to be getting used to. But, you know, this is what it is. Because I was like, is this a part like oh no, this is it. This is the sound. And it kind of sounds like, you know, um, when you or you have an old radio and, you know, you're searching for a station and you're kind of trying to fine tune it. It just sounds so just like staticky and something that you just wouldn't want to listen to on a regular basis. And I'm like, this is, this is going to be your preference for now. And it's just like, oh, and I'm like, you know, I'm just waiting, like, you know, maybe it's going to change, you know, as we, you know, go a little bit further into the film, because 
this is it. And with all of that static, you start to, you know, really hear the and see the silence in those silent moments that he had with that community and with that group and them just enjoying each other, not being able to hear anything and communicate through sound. Like that static just had me like, we won't listen to this. <laughs> But once he goes and, you know, to reconnect with Lou, who's now, you know, with her father, we hear about the father a little bit in the film about, you know, him being wealthy and her being back. Once we actually get there and he, you know, shows up surprisingly and we are introduced to the dad and, you know, him speaking, speaking in French and everything. Anybody else was getting like some vibes off of dad, like. I don't know. You know, they had that. It was real cool once they had to sit down. And, you know, he said, I thought, you know, for 2.5 seconds, Lou was going to come in with a man and she would have, you know, switched up her whole life. And like, you know, this is my French boyfriend now. I was just waiting for the bang to happen. I'm like, he showed up unannounced. He didn't talk to her. Like, I don't know. <laughs> but the dad, you know, confirms that um, Lou's mother, you know, dealt with... Um, uh, you know, addiction and, you know, she took her, took her away from him and he associated, um, Ruben with her leaving and it just gave him bad vibes. And it's like, you know, I really didn't like you before, you know, but I like you now. I was like, damn. All right. But as he's, you know, waiting for her to get there and we actually see Lou in this transition that she's had. And it's like, I didn't even know it was the same person. I was like, whoa. I really was like, oh, she got a new man or something? Like, what's going on? This is a completely different person versus, you know, what we see. You know, the beginning of, of the movie, she was looking like Lilu, Like, Lilu, Lilu, Corbin Dallas. That's what she was given <laughs> towards the beginning, you know, with the orange hair and those eyebrows. But once we see her, it's like a totally different person. And once we, you know, get into them interacting and him, you know, just really missing her so much and just trying to go back. Like, you, you want to go back, but you can't even communicate, you know, how you got the procedure and why, you, you know, I can hear now. I sold everything, you know, that we own, but I got the procedure. But there, you know, she's happy to see him, but it's just like, um, you can tell that at this point she's changed so drastically, not only her looks, but in the inside. It's just kind of like, you know, where do you guys expect to go from here? And once we get into, you know, the dad's party and him being amongst, uh, they're, you know, friends and the fan. it's just, you get straight back into the sense of him being out of place because he can hear, but once again, he can't hear like everybody else. And it's static key and it's, you know, really, it's like noise. It's no longer, you know, talking, it's, it's noise. And it's irritating. It's just like, oh my goodness. And you see him slowly kind of feeling like, Maybe this isn't what, you know, I thought it was. Maybe this procedure and me coming back here is really not what I thought it was. But he's still, you know, really intensified just trying to focus on Lou and ignore the static. Because that, that's what it was, you know, coming into his ears. Once we got into um the communication, you know, with the dad and how intense uh his relationship is was with Lou and him you know asking her to sing the song and the mom and you know I was just getting something weird off of her relationship with her dad with how the movie you know ended up I'm guessing that they relationship was just so intense that um because he says you know the mother you know poisoned her against me she wouldn't you know let I was just getting like you sure that's all you did? Like, you ain't do nothing to Lou, did you? Because it was just, she just seemed so awkward to be around her dad. And it was like, you know, the tour was failing. The band was failing. Things were going on. I needed to do what I needed to do. So I came back home to my dad, who who's weird. I don't know. Maybe I read too much into that. But their relationship dynamic was just giving me, yeah. <laughs> But once, you know, they um, really have a moment to sit and talk and she not only, you know, lets him know that, you know, this wasn't just, you know, me leaning on you and me saving your life. You saved my life, too. You were there for me when I, you know, didn't have anybody, which, you know, we learned on behalf of the dad. Like you when my mom was gone and you were there for me. We supported each other. This wasn't just me, you know, uplifting you out of, you know, your addictions 
this was us supporting each other and they have you know that long embrace and it's just you know so heartfelt and i was just like well her daddy <laughs> But once we get to him, you know, leaving the house and him, you know, walking and we still hear so much, you know, intensity with the noise and the static coming, you know, from that sound. And we end with him cutting it off and appreciating things for what they are silent. Like I no longer hear the bell. I don't hear, you know, the birds, the people talking, the kid on the skateboard. And he just appreciated things without sound and he set his ass down i was like oh oh my goodness this is so good and then it went off y'all <laughs> they gave us that grand intense lovely moment and it went off and i was just like damn i was like whoo he sat down he got a new appreciation for sound he finna go back to joe and he finna be in the community and appreciate things for what they are and live his best life no, it went off. They was like, nah, y'all don't need all that. You got the gist. It went off. <laughs> but I really loved, I really loved that moment and the tranquility we got to see on his face once he realized, you know, I don't need to hear anything. And it's just so precious to see these things without, I, I'd rather see this and hear nothing than hear the static that I'm hearing. I don't need to always hear everything and achieve something and go back to something this is fine this is peaceful in itself that was so great and i love that well you guys that was my review for the sound of metal i really loved a lot about this film i loved everything about this film i love the you know the message and the um emphasis on the sound and even the cinematography the transitions i loved all the acting performances here i thought everybody did a really good job i was planning to go back because i watched it um like two months ago now I did want to go back and watch it again to give you guys a, you know, fresher, more thorough review and not just go off of what I remember. But I'm really, really not feeling well and I'm feeling really under the weather. Hopefully you guys couldn't tell through this review because I really try, you know, to give you guys the A for effort and give you guys something and not just go a whole week without posting. Because, you know, you guys are so, y'all so important. You is kind, you is smart, you is important. <laughs> but um, I really, you know, try to give it my all here i hope you guys got what i was trying to say with the review and i hope you enjoyed i hope you subscribe and i hope you return but you know drop down and tell me what you guys thought about this movie please drop down and tell me if i forgot something because i feel like i forgot something because i watched it so long ago to now give a review on the film but i think i hit the important key points that i wanted to but i'm about to get some rest i see you guys next time bye